Happy to be joined by the number fourth ranked middleweight, Jarrett Cannonier, who uh, we, we don't know what he's up to. Obviously, he's coming off an injury and want to know when he's going to get back in there. And of course, we had the title fight last Saturday, UFC 297. But first, Jared, how are you? How's it going, man? Uh, I've been good. Uh, again, like you said, on the road, road to recovery, if you will, um, from MCL uh, surgery, 12, no, 13 weeks post-op, post-op from having my MCL repair on my right knee <laughs> and some meniscus damage as well. So, uh, yeah, that's why I've been doing uh, recovering, going to PT and staying in shape. Uh, so when the doctor uh, uh, gives me the clear, I'll be ready to get back to business. Gotcha. So sounds like there's no timetable yet. You're still kind of waiting to see how the recovery goes and then you'll kind of get an idea of when you can get back in there. Well, I did see my surgeon. He did tell me that he would uh, be able to clear me by the tail end of March. Oh, cool. Okay. So, yeah. So another couple of months, another month and a half, I should be back uh, clear to compete. So uh, in the next couple of weeks, maybe in the next month, I'm going to be really get back into my grappling. That's the only thing I really haven't been doing is a lot of grappling. So uh, I've been continuing my strength and conditioning and working my striking and stuff like that. So uh i'm still i'm still feeling sharp i'm feeling stronger than ever uh i've made some more i made a lot of improvements uh since my last fight and even since the injury i've made even more improvements the injury occurred and i felt like when i came back i felt like i'm a better fighter you know because i've been studying and you know still thinking about this thing so exactly you're not, feeling, I, was, I was gonna say you're not sitting on the couch you're uh you know planning your next move which is which is smart here uh that, that definitely makes sense uh take me through the injury a little bit because um it, it, now correct me if i'm wrong here so you were offered to fight hamzat chimaev on the abu dhabi card right when paulo costa was out you were also i believe scheduled to fight roman delize um but the injury happened i guess with, with the uh, it was like an hour after you got the call for chimaev right T tell me a little bit about that absolutely it was uh tuesday i think it was the 11th Mm -hmm. Or the tenth, ten days, eleven days prior to the uh, the event in Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. and I get the call on my way to to wrestling practice that uh, Costa is out, and they want me to step in for Hamzat, and if I, you know, when I win, I get the title shot. So I'm like, yeah, you know, let's do it. So uh, I go in, I tell them, let me go in and come uh, confer with my with my team, with the coaches, and uh, I will give you a call in like an hour or so. And during practice, I ended up tearing my MCL on a mat return. And as unfortunate as it was, I wasn't too bent out of shape about it. These things happen. Um, and I'm happy about the place that I'm at and the environment that I'm in so that I'm able to recover and even recover and uh, strong, come back stronger. So it sucks the opportunity had to, had to go away like that. But uh, things happen for a reason. So for I'm sure. just waiting. I'm waiting for uh, this whole thing to play out. When I get back, uh, the reason reasons will be made clear for sure. What did you think of his performance against Kamaru Usman? Uh, you know, he's fought at middleweight before, but Usman's sort of one of the you know the bigger names uh, in the division. Well, not in the division; he's in welterweight. But what did you think of his performance in that fight? I thought the first round, you know, classic com comes out a lot of pressure, uh, strong grappling. Um, Um, the second and third round, not so much. He took his foot off the gas, apparently due to his injured hand. Um, um, so it would have been interesting to see him if he would have been able to continue that that pace um, and things like that. So I thought it was a good performance, nonetheless. You know, to be able to fight through an injury and, and come out with the vic with the victory is always a good thing. You know, it says a lot about his heart, his character. You know, and. Uh, his will and drive to go out there and compete. Speaking of performances, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to get you on is because you, obviously we had the middleweight title fight last Saturday. Someone you fought, Sean Strickland, coming up short against Drickus Duplessis. I was curious, going in, before we talk about the actual fight, who did you think was going to win going into the matchup? Going into the matchup, um, I wouldn't count, I wasn't counting out Sean Strickland, you know, because I semi did that against Israel. I think that whole world did it against Israel and he surprised us. Not to mention the fact that I have experience. I've shared the, K, uh, the octagon with him, and I, I understand how how hard it is to get a hold of that man. You know what I mean? Because when I fought him, I was trying to hit him. So I'm sure DDP was trying to hit him hard as well. So uh, he's not easy. To, he's not easy to hit. He makes himself uh, what's the word unavailable, if mm -hmm. you will, for strikes. So um, 
Classic Sean Strickland. He did it. He looked the exact same. Did the same thing he did in his last two, three, four fights uh, against us top competitors, at least. So um, the fight went similar to the how he fought when uh, the fight with D DDP went similar to how the fight with yep. me went. I agree. Whereas he edged it in the numbers, you know. But uh, the I feel like the presence of me. You know what I'm saying? The damage that I did. He was on, he only outstruck me by six strikes, mm -hmm. six itty bitty witty itty bitty jabs, I would say. <laughs> but uh, you know, I was landing some hard leg kicks, I was going to the body, and I blooded his nose in that fight. So I definitely did more damage. Um, not so much. I mean, DDP was wearing a lot more damage in this fight, but uh I think his presence, you know, uh, allowed him to come away with that decision. Yeah. I think if you are under the consensus of if you want to fight, if you want to win the title, you got to take the title from the champ. I can definitely see them giving Sean the, uh, the decision in that regard. Do you think it was a robbery? I've heard some people say that. I mean, I personally thought it was a really close fight that could have gone either way. But um, did you feel it was enough to warrant the, the term robbery? No, I wouldn't say it was a robbery. I think it was pretty close. It could have gone either way. Um, I understand DDP winning by points. You know what I mean? It was close. We don't really see that in championship fights, close fights going. We usually see people crying that, oh, the champ won, you know, champ won because he was a champ. Mm -hmm. So uh, it could have gone either way. I'm not going to say it's, it's, it's a good thing the judges got it right because <laughs> I, I semi share that sentiment. If you want to win the title, you have to take it in impressive fashion. And if you want to retain the title, I also feel that you need to be retaining it in impressive fashion as well. Eking out decisions isn't really a good look for uh, for guys at that cap who carry the title who are seen to be at a, a caliber of uh, elevation. You know, guys in that in that realm. So I think that's why a lot of people got um, dissatisfied with Israel. Some people got dissatisfied with GSP. Um, so again, that's just the fan sentiment. You know, I think the fighters are definitely happy that they go home with W's. So it is what it is. Yeah, no, no, I, I completely agree. Uh, in terms of the, the scorecards and everything, was there anything about the fight fight that surprised you that you weren't expecting going in? Uh, you know, I, I know some people talked about Duplessis and his cardio that didn't seem to be a factor. He went all five rounds. No, he went all five rounds. He was putting on, he was a, uh, a constant state of pressure for him throughout the whole fight. Um, I wouldn't say anything surprised me out of the fight. Uh, maybe the lack of – I don't know. The lack, it, that, it's more of an aesthetic thing, the lack yeah. of sharpness in the striking. That's more aesthetic, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, there is some uh, tec technical aspects to it, especially if you're talking to boxers. <laughs> for sure. For but sure. – uh, but they was in there slanging it out as, as you will, you know, slanging and banging. So. Um, when was the last time you or your management spoke to the UFC? Was it the, the Chimaev thing or have you spoken to him since then? I haven't spoken to them since I told them about the injury. Okay. Um, uh, so. Does, does that surprise you a bit just because, again, I would think you're in the mix. I mean, you had a win over Strickland, right? And I know it was close, like we sort of referenced there. But, yeah. I mean, there's not – like, if you look at the contenders right now, you could make arguments for all – I think I think pretty much all the fighters of, of why they shouldn't get or why they should, right? It's not, it's not really clear-cut, right? You're absolutely right. It's not really clear-cut who can get the next title, unless you're talking about me. I think right, I'm for sure. Head of the pack <laughs> well, I mentioned you had the win there, Jared, so there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm coming off of two wins, one the former champion, one the number three ranked. So I think, again, I have a uh, a good uh, call for the title, if you will. <laughs> um, even though the win against Vittori wasn't a contender's match. But you dominated him that fight. In fact, I think you dominated him more than Whitaker did in, in his performance, to be honest. It was a very, very complete performance by you. Yeah, it very was. It was a record-breaking performance. That's that. right. So, yeah. Um, and again, you know, like I keep saying, I'm better than that. I'm better than that now. I'm much better than that. I'm miles ahead of that that fighter. So, <laughs> um, it ain't gonna be probably ain't gonna be no record breaking performances. The only only records I'm trying to break is fastest finishes. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe. so um, 
No, but I, I do plan on uh, getting a hold of my manager, giving him an update so he can get a hold of the UFC and give them an update. They don't usually just reach out to me and be like, hey, how you doing or anything like that. Right. Okay. So um, unless they really wanted to get me into the fight, you know what I mean, um, into a fight soon. So, um, But again, they know that I'm injured, and I will tell them when I'm ready to come back is usually how it goes. Right. So um, and uh, if they're desperate to get me in, I mean, I'd be uh, – What's the word? Uh, a little flattered by that. If they're desperate to get me in there, and um, again, my doctor said he's going to clear me in March. I think the uh, some of the you know some of the uh, rumors is that they're trying to put DDP on three hundred. Right. Uh, Would that be too soon for you? I'm, I'm guessing if you're getting cleared in March, that's not a lot of time to prepare for that card. Uh. Well, again, I'm, I stay ready. You know. Okay. I'm, ready. I'm to be honest. I'm ready to go right now. Okay. You know? Uh, with that being said, I would definitely love to have a camp. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to close the door on it, mm -hmm. but it would have to be the right fight for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, um, I would definitely need prop time to prepare because I haven't been able to grapple. Right. And um, if there and. <sighs> Given that I was going to fight Hamza last time, I would definitely want to have a, a camp where grappling is going to be the focus. Um, same way I fought against any any other grappler. You know, when I fought Brunson, grappling was the fo focus. So, um, but you know, in the next in the next weeks or so, I'm going to get back into grappling. I'm going to start back training, and by the time the doctor says you're cleared to go, I'm going to be in full training, ready to get back into it, tools sharp ready to start going. So um, uh, UFC 300, I would say, would be close, <laughs> you know, but I wouldn't say it would be too soon. Okay. Because, again, if I get cleared in March, I'm ready to go in April. There you go. Okay. Well, that, that's good to know. Now, it's not your job to match make the fights, but let's say for some reason it, it won't work out you getting the title shot next. Out of the three options, because I think there's three right now, right? There's Adesanya, Israel Adesanya. There's uh, obviously the Sean Strickland rematch because the fight was so close. Or there's Hamzat Chimaev. Who do you think out of those three would deserve it the most? Deserve? Uh, I know deserves a very loose term in MMA. There's yeah. not really, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of factors that go into who it. Would have a, who would have a, a higher stake at the at yes? A, I would say uh, the fans still love Sean Strickland, you know. Yeah. But I think fans love that juicy drama story between Adesanya and, and Duplessis. That will be. That could potentially be a bigger draw for pay per views, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I would say, uh, yeah, I would say that Sean Strickland hasn't really defended his title. He hasn't gone on any uh, long, extended runs or anything. So immediate rematch is really hard to, to pin on him. Mm -hmm. And Hamza has yet to fight a middleweight. Well, you know, right. he's, he's he's fought a middleweight, but not a ranked middleweight. I think that's the no, big issue. He fought, he fought uh, Gerald Murchard, and but but I know what you mean. Like that, that's I think yeah. a strong argument too. Like he hasn't fought even anyone in the top fifteen, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. Yeah, he hasn't fought a contender at middleweight. Yeah, that's not. I'm not saying that to discredit his skills or anything. You know For sure. I mean? Yeah. No, I know what the, you mean. It's just the optics, right? Yeah, and to and uh, yeah. So, um, but like I said, if they're not going to give me the title fight, when I come back, I want the next best thing. So, well, would that be Chimaev? Because I think that's one of the things people want to see. If they do go with Adesanya and uh, DDP, I think you and Chimaev is the perfect fight because he needs that you know big name to to sort of deserve that title shot. Nothing against Usman, but he's a welterweight, right? Yeah, exactly. So okay. um, I'm nobody sacrificial lamb. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say I'm his huckleberry. It would sound cool to say I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> that would sound for cool, sure. But, for uh, sure. Um, at this point in time, he's ranked number nine. I'm down to make it happen as long as we, as long as it's clear that we have a tight, you know, this is a contenders match. Right. They offered him that, you know, he's saying that they claimed the, that they offered him the title for the Usman fight. I'm sure they offered it if I was going to accept it and, and they probably didn't take it off of the table. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, for me, that's hard to digest, you know, Usman yeah. was not a little way. So, um, when I get back, if they're not going to give me the title, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The next best thing, the thing that gets me to the title. And if you say the best comes out, let's do it. Yeah. And uh, and you're both coming off injuries too, right? So it kind of, you know, kind of lines up a little bit too. It kind of puts us, yeah, both in the same, 
similar in a similar boat. You know what I mean? Right there, they really want to push him to the title. He really wants to get to the title. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, I'm right here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I shouldn't have to say, "Hey, I want a title shot." It's clear and evident <laughs> that the ass I've been kicking says that I want the title shot. So if it's not going to be the title next again, I will definitely fight the next guy in line. If and, and if it's Hamza, let's make that happen. Now let's, I, do, let's do that five. I would like to do that rounds. Let's see what he got. I, in the I five think so too. Five. I think all number one contender fights should be five rounds because you know uh, th those extra two rounds really do make a difference with the cardio and all that different stuff. So so there's that. Um, based off what you've seen at Hamzat at middleweight, um, you know obviously he was able to kind of almost finish Usman in that first round. Do you kind of look at that too, knowing you're a guy who used to fight at heavyweight and just the strength you possess and stuff that that might be a challenge for him to do what he did to Usman to you? Not because I'm at heavyweight, but because of my skill level. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, and uh, his skill level is great. So it will be a challenge. You know what I mean? A challenge that I will never, I would never shy away from. So I'm happy. Whenever I fought a wrestler, I've felt the level up that I've gotten from the from the camps, from the time thinking about it, and uh, and just getting closer to the sport itself in, in wrestling. I didn't grow up wrestling like that, so um, a lot of these grapplers may seem optically have that advantage, but. Uh, I'm a smart fighter. You know what I mean? I know I, I know what to do. I got a smart team behind me, a strong team behind me, and we make things happen. So when we fight these wrestlers, whenever you see me fight a wrestler, it hasn't been all Jerry got out right. At one point in time, it was. When I fought Glover, he out wrestled me. When I fought Jan Blaho Blahovic, his wrestling uh, got him the win. But, um, you know, since moving down to the lab, that has that's, it's, that's no longer an issue. Yeah. I'm Constantly upgrading in every aspects of the sport, in every aspects of martial arts, in every aspects of being physically uh, able and, um, you know, physically able body to do this at the highest level. So I feel that he may, he if we do, when, if and when we do fight, he might get a takedown. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will definitely be work for him to get that takedown. It ain't going to be easy, but um if he does get that takedown, he's going to have a hard time keeping me down. And if he's able to keep me down, it's because he's not punching him. He's not striking, you know. So um, my goal is to not let him get into that wrestling environment and let him build himself up in that regard. So I've been really good at neutralizing guys uh, wherever the fight goes and then getting back to where I need to be so I can uh, progress the fight so I can get to that that victory, if you will. Um, they're obviously stacking all these cards leading up. We've got, you know, next month's pay-per-view is pretty good. You have the O'Malley's card, UFC 299. That looks almost as good as UFC 300. And then you get UFC 300. Um, it looks like International Fight Week is going to be the end of June instead of early July. Would that be kind of perfect timing? Because a fight between you and Hamzat, I think, would be perfect for that card. That would be perfect timing. I mean, you know, yeah. that would be uh, a lot of time to get cleared from the doctor and then get back into the gym training. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> personal reasons aside, I would like to get in sooner rather than later okay. uh, for personal reasons. But um, with that being said, professionally speaking, June will be a perfect time frame for me. Uh, physically speaking, give my uh, giving that ligament more time to heal mm -hmm. and uh, more time to develop skills, especially if I know who it's going to be. I know it's going to be one of these guys at the top. So. Mm -hmm. My, my vision has already narrowed to uh, their skill sets. Our coach's vision has already narrow, narrowed to their uh, skill sets, as well as my own skill sets expanding those. So, um, again, man, the lab, one of the monikers at the lab is 1% better. So it's not 1% better because we got to fight this guy or that guy. It's just 1% better. You know, that's what we do. So I'm constantly upgrading. And if they want to push that fight out to June, I'm going to have a good – three, four months to train and get right back into the, uh, right back into the mix. You mentioned how, you know, it's title shot or whoever's next in line. I'm assuming you're kind of past a Roman Delize fight. I only mentioned that because he's fighting next Saturday against Imavov. Uh, well, uh, because the other thing is Delize got beat by a guy that you beat, which was Vittori, right? So I can understand from your perspective, maybe not wanting to have that matchup. If, if he beats yeah. Imavov, of course. And and when they offered me that matchup, I was a little reluctant to take it, mm -hmm. you know, because I wanted the Hamza fight. Right. In, in October, I was waiting to see what was happening with that. 
or the title fight against Strickland because he had just it was a title fight of Strickland yeah. first and foremost pro priority one and then maybe the fight against Hamza for the title if they were going to do that so we were it was mostly campaigning for the title at that point and then they offered uh, Delice which was uh it was hard it was a hard pill for me to swallow you know because I had just beaten Vittori who had already beaten him so um but because there was a lack of uh, warm bodies for me to beat up on, I went ahead and accepted that fight. And then the injury happened. You know, I got the call for comms out. The injury happened. A, little, a bunch of stuff happened at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe it was a purge of all the bad shit that's going to happen to me. And then this next year, 2024, is going to be nothing but, uh, you know, celebration and elation and big things happening. You mentioned the title fight off the top. Um, from what you've seen with, with Duplessis, how do you feel like your style matches up against his if you guys were to fight? I think that's going to be a very exciting fight. You know, he doesn't go backwards too much. You know what I'm saying? He's very smart in his movement, but he's a pressure fighter. He, he is a present fighter. Um, he doesn't try to goad you into, uh, you know, pull you into traps or anything like that. He, he'd rather run you over, um, you know, kick your head off. His Ellie leg kick looked really good on him too, man. Mm -hmm. But um, that's going to be a good fight because I'm a very smart fighter. But at the same time, man, I'm, my job, my goal is to go in there and whoop your ass. You know what I mean? I'm trying to finish you as fast as possible, as cleanly as possible. And uh, in working on that, I've gotten much better at, at this thing. You know what I mean? So it's going to be two guys. It's going to be kind of like the Vittori fight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it won't go to it would I, I wouldn't see that going a distance. Mm -hmm. So um we're gonna be in each other. I'm gonna be in his face, that's for damn sure. Mm -hmm. We're gonna see if he's gonna gonna be able to, to stick around and get in my face. But um that usually doesn't happen in my fights, you know. Um I'm a, I'm an imposing presence in, in there, you know. I know he's a big guy and he loves to uh lean on his strength and stuff, but um I've seen that before. You know, we've dealt I've dealt with strong guys before. And um, I'm more than uh, capable of overcoming any sort of challenge any of these guys can bring it, bring to me. So that fight is going to be definitely a banger with me banging on his head and putting him away real quick. I don't know if you pay attention to any of this stuff, but are you aware of kind of what's going on between Ian Gary and Sean Strickland? I know Gary was kind of critiquing the middleweight title fight, and there's been kind of a lot of backlash to that. I was curious if you saw that or not. I saw something that he said it looked like two amateur fighting. I didn't see the back and forth. I don't know if Sean re replied to that or anything like that. I don't think he did. There was like a fake account that I think it looked like he had replied, but I don't think Sean's actually replied to it. But obviously, he wouldn't be happy if he saw it, right? So, no, I'm sure Sean doesn't really care at this point. You know what I mean? He lost the title, so I'm pretty sure he's more. I'm sure he doesn't like he said he doesn't care about the belt, but I'm sure he is not happy that he lost the fight. So, mm -hmm. um. And they've been doing their whole thing. You know, it's like they've been doing a little, little thing on the Internet. So, yeah. Yeah. You, but you don't really pay attention to that because obviously he's been getting a lot of flack for kind of going after other fighters. I see it. You know, I see. I'm not blind. I see these things. But I don't I don't uh, I don't engage. I don't like to contribute my energy to such trivial things. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the shit ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? It's. To be honest, it's, it's the circus playing out, if you will. Right. So okay. I'm not finna put no makeup on and big floppy shoes <laughs> and a and a colorful afro and prance around on the internet or Instagrams and say this and say that to get reactions and and to see what the other people think and feel. Because I can give two shits what anybody think or feel about anything. You know what I mean? As yeah. long as what you are doing does not it it you know interfere with what I'm trying to do. Well said. Um, I got to mention to our audience here that uh, the reason, well, part of the reason we got this interview set up, and I was actually going to reach out to you anyways, was you were on my live stream on, I think it was Tuesday, um, and I knew it was you because uh, when we set up our interviews, you have a very particular profile picture, because you know, you'll get like fans using like a fighter's username in a chat, right? So I wasn't sure, but I remember seeing that. I was like, okay, that's a dead giveaway, and then you texted me after. My question though, uh, how often do you watch like YouTube content, whether it's myself or other fighters? Like, was it just something you were scrolling through, or like, how did that come about? Well, I do, I do subscribe to your channel on well, thank YouTube. You. It's a lot. My Instagram feed and my YouTube feed is a lot of combat content. Okay. You know, um, so I watch a lot of, I definitely have to watch the airways. So I like the, uh, the voices that I can, um, that I can uh, 
tolerate. Mm-hmm. And not to say that you're not tolerable. I like I like uh, I like your content. That's I why appreciate I appreciate that. You know, and I respect also you. Hey, also got to mention only media member who asked Drake is about uh, about you yeah, at the at the presser. I don't know if you saw that yes, pre-fight. I did see that? Yeah, I did see that. So um, I like I like I like your approach in your in your I like your I don't know what to call it your style of journalism your okay. approach to the sport. Um, I like your uh, dedication to it. You know what I mean? Thanks. Your dedication to your job, you know, what you do. So I appreciate it. You give us fighters a voice that we probably wouldn't have unless we got on ourselves and did our own thing. So, um, yes, I, I definitely watched some of your stuff. I saw, uh, you know, when I see the, uh, especially when I see the headlines that may potentially, you know, pertain to me, you know, I like to go in and uh, engage. And uh, Well, you had that thing a couple of years ago. I remember this. I didn't even know you were mad at me, but I remember I remember I pronounced your name wrong and you're like, hey, man, it's not Cantonier, <laughs> it's Cannonier. And I was like, my bad. Didn't mean to do that. So, but I, but I liked how you handle it because some fighters get mad. Like I get fighters maybe like blocking me or getting upset. And it's like, just tell me, like, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. You know, I try and be fair. So. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. At first, at first, it was like Cantonier. Like I know, I know. Listen, sometimes I butcher some names. My bad. It wasn't yeah. intentional though, for sure. So it's all good, brother. Uh, and then, yes, you know what I mean. I'm not one to hold grudges. I ain't. I'm not emotionally. I don't maintain that. So I don't carry my animosity around. I would not. That's not something I can do. Mm-hmm. So, um, absolutely, man. I saw you was trying to get, you know, get interviews. So I'm like, okay, let's see what. Let me just say it to him and then we can just clear it out that way and you know for me the direct path path is always the best i don't like to really assume things or or say sideways things to try to get to the foot no i'm coming at you directly yeah and um and we handled it just like me so it was cool stuff you know so uh yes i do like catching your show um a lot of the times I'm in transit. When your show is coming, when your show is coming on, I'm either uh, I'm coming home, so I have to get right back into uh, recovery mode, like taking showers, eating lunch, and stuff like that. And it's hard to to sit and watch your shows a lot. But no uh, worries. It's listen. I do a lot of content, so it's it's hard to keep up with all of yeah. it. But I'm I'm just glad you tune in, man. I th- I think that's awesome and uh, really good. And I also got to mention, I messed up the time today, so uh, I mean, we we this might have not happened because of my my not looking at the time zone. Because I guess there's different parts of Arizona that have because I know there's some parts of Arizona that is the same as Pacific time, right? Um, because I've done interviews with like Dracar and a few other guys, and it's the same time zone as me. But I guess I guess you're an hour ahead or something. Well, well, in Arizona, they don't adhere to the uh, daylight saving time. Oh, that could be why. So, okay, that makes sense. So during this time of year, I believe it's as if between March and November, I believe it's as if we are mountain time. Right. Okay, that and makes between, sense. Between November and March is as if we are Pacific time. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So, awesome. So yeah, it happens. I, it took me some time to get used to it, but uh, I don't even notice daylight saving time anymore. Right. So if I ever leave uh, Arizona for another matrix, if you will, I would be something to adjust to. For sure. Jared, thanks so much for doing this. We went away over time, but we got a lot covered today, which is great. Uh, if there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, if you got anything you're using right now, any sponsors, anything like that, man, as usual, I'll give you the last word. Uh. I can't really think of any sponsors off the top of my head outside of, you know, home base, MMA lab. We be putting in work, man, the things that we're doing in there. I love going there every day, man. It's just my home away from home. It's therapeutic. It's so many good things for me personally and my family as well. So um, the MMA lab is awesome. The elite team at the MMA lab is awesome. Growing, getting bigger, getting better. Um, so, uh, continued gratitude and I'm going to continue to put into the uh, the energy that we have that we're cultivating there and Aris Sports Medicine for uh, not only just this recovery but plenty of other recoveries that I've had uh, at Aris as well as the continued knowledge, the continued training the continued advancement of my uh, physical fitness um, as it pertains to mixed martial arts, the knowledge that I get from um, Al Escobar and the rest of the team there is has been uh, invaluable. Okay, I almost forgot the word. Has been invaluable. So um, uh, again, I'm cultivating so much in here, and I can't wait to get back in the octagon to uh, let it loose on my next opponent. Hopefully, it's the champ or the next or the next man or the uh, next runner up. So um, it's going down, guys.